Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to our uh, second uh, uh, topic. <clears throat> and uh, we have video collaboration at Caltech. Uh, it's not your father's video conferencing system. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Azer Mugal from, Cal from Caltech. Uh, Azer is a network engineer in uh, Caltech High Engineer Energy Physics Department. Uh, and his group is currently working on CMS Tier 2 Center in, uh, in Caltech. Uh, and for, this is a, a, for providing high-speed network for the L LHC community. So without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce uh, our next speaker. Good morning, everyone. My name is Azar. I'm from Caltech. Um, I represent the uh, High Energy Physics Group uh, in Caltech. Uh, a brief discussion about the um, Caltech High Energy Physics. Uh, this, uh, there are um, two senior faculty members, more, uh, namely Harvey and Maria. Uh, fellow members, scientists, grad students, um, self students. Um, it's not that big team. Um, uh, then there are some computing and network teams uh, who manage the tier two center um, in Caltech Pasadena. This group is split uh, between uh, Geneva, uh, CERN, and uh, part of the team is in Caltech in Pasadena. Um, the, the group is largely based in CERN because of the work and the way they have to be involved into the experiments uh, in day-to-day This is the LSC and the experiment and how it is distributed uh, among the two countries. Part of it is in uh, Switzerland and part of it is in uh, France. Uh, some of the uh, main experiments are listed over here, CMS, LSCB, ATLAS, and ALICE, where CMS and ATLAS are the biggest experiments. So it's a 27 kilometer, um, uh, this, uh, the tubes around this whole uh, experiment, these are 27 kilometers in circumference with uh, 100 meter uh, in, in depth where the collision chambers and the tubes are installed. This is the main uh, detector uh, since our group is involved in the CMS. So this is a CMS detector and the central part is the um, CMS solenoid. Um, uh, this, this CMS solenoid uh, generates uh, a magnetic field which is four Tesla equivalent to 100,000 times the magnetic field of the Earth. Um, the energy that it contains is kind of equivalent to melt down 20 tons of gold, or you can say it's kind of equal to uh, move, uh, if you look on the bottom, left bottom, to move the, equivalent to the kinetic energy required to move that big uh, man-made carrier. As most of the, those who are involved in the LHC experiments and those communities uh, might have used EVO, uh, enabling virtual organization. CEVO is a successor to uh, EVO uh, with uh, more focus on cloud and uh, reaching out to the communities worldwide. Um, this is uh, recently launched uh, starting this year. Previously, uh, since December 2012, it was all EVO. It is still maintained by Caltech, it's the same research group. So my, basically the talk is uh, how we do the collaboration and why the collaboration is required at Caltech for this LHC, for the LSC experiments. Because of the diverse nature of the experiments where part of the team is based in Geneva and part of the team is based in Caltech and some of the members um, want to participate from other countries while traveling worldwide. So the team needs a collaboration that can be used uh, anywhere from anywhere in the world. Well, either they are sitting on their desktops, at their home, in the conference centers, uh, either on um, East Coast, West Coast, or in, uh, in the other time zones in the Europe. So how we use um, uh, and how our meetings are um, uh, go in Caltech. So we have weekly group meetings where the main faculty members are involved. Then we have uh, meetings in CERN directly. Then we have subgroup meetings among the students and the new SURF students. Then we have ongoing experimental meetings where the um, detector operators needs to be online and needs to be coordinated with the scientists. 
then the public lectures where you can broadcast record the lectures at large yeah, this is the te technical overview about the new Sevo GH which is based on the Evo it has a multi-point capability it is cloud-based it, it supports uh, high-def video uh, you can run it on Android, on Mac, Windows, Linux. It's under uh, development on the Apple iOS as well. And uh, right now it's in the process of uh, going into the Apple <coughs> app um, store. You can, from this, uh, from a meeting, you can dial out to a H323 based uh, client, for example, Polycom. And now there's a capability where a Polycom can dial into the meeting as well. Self-optimizing, it, it, it is consisted of a mesh of node reflectors worldwide. Um, and that's why if part of the um, reflector or part of the, for example, there was an earthquake in Japan when um, the reflector over there was uh, not accessible to the scientists uh, in that area. So that video and those video streams were automatically redirected with the help of Mona Lisa, which is basically managing these, uh, the Evo um, uh, network was, their videos were redirected going through the another reflector. So how we uh, manage and how we do these um, uh, weekly group meetings. So these are um, group meetings where um, a senior faculty member has to be involved it has to be chaired um, by a postdoc in CERN either or by a professor in Caltech. Or sometimes the professor go visit the CERN as well when the, uh, when the experiments are running. The, the each of the presenter, if there's a time, they present their slides, they um, share with each other. Um, and the clients and, and the students, if they are not in those meetings, then they can um, contact the same meeting from their homes or anywhere. So it is mostly attended by all the members of the group where the professors, postdoc, PhD students, research and support personnel needs to be there. This is an example how uh, this looks like. On the left side you can see uh, some of the group me uh, members uh, in one of the conf conference rooms in Pasadena. The middle top, uh, this is a conference room in Geneva. And these other um, are from their, uh, the left bottom is from his home, and these three are um, having discussion uh, through their rooms. They are all three in Pasadena, of course. But this is an example how this meeting looks like and how people interact with each other, all on a single single screen. And we all rec we, rec we can record this video as well, and when you replay this video, how it will look like exactly in the same same way where uh, everyone is talking or if someone is presenting his slides will be there now the meeting with <coughs> CERNs this involves uh, mostly the detector operators or the senior research scientists which needs to be uh, online and uh, to be in touch with each other on 24 by 7 basis um, other people can join um, these these are kind of closed meetings where um, only the detector or the research scientist needs to be there, and but others can also be connected to the same meeting if needed. A discussion about the subgroup. So these these spawn basically from the main weekly meetings where individual students then have kind of discussions or the, the new sub students then. They talk on their projects and um, discuss. So this is an example of another example of the subgroup meeting, <coughs> where, um, for example, we have an a team meeting that manages the whole Evo. Then there are team meeting, for example, the USLC net. We have our own team team meeting rooms where we uh, collaborate. This is um, this explains how the experimental uh, meetings are placed either in Geneva or in Pasadena. So it needs to be active 24 by 7, and uh, everyone he who needs to know uh, can be given access to the rooms. 
expert discussions from experiment control rooms open when needed to the public. Uh, the room sometimes seems occupied, but um, anyone later on can access the virtual meeting room. These are less formal, more presentations. As, as you know, that uh, mostly the scientists have more presentation as compared to the, um, to the regular meetings. So, so they present and then they uh, do the meeting as well, all together. And they can share their screens as well, their same desktops, along with the presentations. This is an other example of how uh, different people can uh, interact with each other. You can see hundreds of these videos all together in a same. And uh, if you click on one of the video, you can enlarge it to the full screen. If you're just interested in just one video, you don't need to look on all the videos. If uh, you are just look, looking at one of the presentation, you click on one of the icon and um, on the second desktop, or, or sorry, on the second screen, you can have that video displayed while you are watching on these uh, individual discussions. So this is also capable of doing the public lectures and broadcast and record at large. Uh, these public lectures were heavily used uh, during the LHC milestones, for example, when the LHC was started, when the first beams were collided, when they were used, and during the recent last year's Higgs boson kind of particle discovery, which happened uh, last year. You can have invited guests, and um, which can be physics, from physics, computing, or any kind of issue. So this is a video about how uh, it was uh, accessed uh, and shown on the EVO, which is uh, a previous generation to the SIVO. And at that time, you can see um, how many? 1,700 connections, 1,700 individual people basically connected to, um, to this uh, a single conference room. And this is a live broadcast on the left side from their main control room at CERN. This is an example how um, a presenter can talk, present, and capture, for example, through an H323 device, while his slides are on another uh, stream coming out from his desktop. So people can see uh, on one side uh, some of the slides and on the other side some other uh, images or some other um, graphs. So this was uh, during 2008 where uh, 4,500 high school students uh, participated uh, in Europe and US uh, and spent about two weeks um, for a physics course uh, which was broadcasted um, life um, and um, it was for the third international master classes for the high school students. So you can see there, there are many uh, virtual uh, remote rooms which are contained in a single meeting and the presenters are uh, explaining or the teachers are talking with all those students. So this is a, an, I, an idea how the broadcast works. This is a successor to the 2008, where another 5,000 high school students participated in a similar environment, and all those lectures were broadcasted and later, and those were recorded for later replay. And the best thing is that uh, you, not, you don't need to be in big conference rooms, you don't need high-end devices, you can be connected anywhere from your laptop, if it is either Linux, Mac, Windows, whatever, and you don't need to come leave your um, remote conference or you can join from any anywhere. And if you have high speed link, then you can get the high def video as well. This is a same example when uh, the LSC was started. So it's a representation of how these individual uh, clients were connected and this is a diagram of how Mona Lisa, which is another monitoring tool, is controlling and managing all these clients. The, the central part, is the core of all this uh, circle is, 
is the um, reflector node and if for example one of the reflector node is down it can rearrange and reshuffle those clients and they can connect automatically to the other reflector nodes so in summary uh, based on our group which is uh, located in different parts of the world in different time zones uh, our group needs a collaboration a collaboration tool uh, where they can effectively communicate talk uh, meet on daily basis, on weekly basis, and they can present their research material and um, more effectively. Thank you very much, and uh, if you have any questions, I'd like to take them. And if you have more, uh, if you'd like to know more about the COGH, uh, you can visit uh, the COGH website. I'm guessing that your system is not optimized for end-to-end -end latency uh, because it, it seems to be like people giving presentations to other people. Do you have a, any idea or information about what the end-to-end -end latency is? I think it depends if it is between uh, Geneva and um, Caltech, then it's a different latency. If the presenter and the end audience is within the U.S., then the reflected nodes are, for example, if the audience or one of the one one member is in uh, Seattle, and the other member is in the same uh, West Coast region, for example, California, then the no they both will connect with the same reflector node or within the same region. They don't need to go to the node in New York or Chicago or in the on the Pacific side, Japan. They will they will be aligned based on how they are connected, how they are well connected with the R and D uh, network. Thank you. I'm curious if you've had any feedback on challenges that people have had, particularly as a small group discussion expands to a large one. I see sort of some tiled display effects where people are laying up multiple videos and uh, or, or multiple different panes and is the end user expected to do that like that one right is the end, end user or does the software do that and then how as I a viewer of this can I identify the areas that are of particular interest in the windows that I want to track rather than having to track all of them so the end user does not need to manage all this thing when you start the client on your desktop or on a, or in a conference then this whole video in a single um, in a single dialog box will appear automatically with individual videos popping up so you don't need to start or manage all those videos if you are part of a big meeting and if you are sending your video the other person is sending it or everyone is sending their video and sending their lectures as well either using uh, a screen share or desktop share so they all will appear on this main video so if you are interested in one of the um, special slide, you can just go click that slide and there's a small eye or there's a reflect button. You click that button and it will pop up, come out of this main pane and go into a separate window and you can enlarge and uh, keep viewing that window, window and that will be a parallel stream. So that stream will keep coming on this main window but that stream will also come into the second window which you just popped out from this main application so so the idea is basically you are still in the main meeting you're talking discussing and you are watching what is most specific to you so you don't need to manage this one you just need to find out what's interesting for you i think i hope that answers your yeah. question Can you have to tell us what the cost model is for this, like who pays for all these servers and, and things like that? Oh, I don't know the cost model for this. Uh, I think uh, this, if you send an email to support at COGH or if you uh, visit that website, I think the guys can better tell uh, about the cost model. But I think um, since this is mostly designed and developed for the community, for the research people, so it will be, I think, um, very close to what they can afford. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much.